Mother-in-law came into my room holding my lost phone and asked for an explanation. I quickly understood the situation, pretended to go along with my sister-in-law's schemes, and recorded the entire conversation to show my husband later. Three weeks ago, I, a 28-year-old woman, happily tied the knot with my 30-year-old boyfriend of four years. However, the bliss of our newlywed life was short-lived as his family, including his 54-year-old mother and 25-year-old sister, moved in with us immediately after the wedding. According to his mother, their house was undergoing renovations and needed more time to be fixed. Initially, I wasn't thrilled about the extended family stay, but my husband and I were set to leave for our honeymoon in a few weeks, so I decided not to make a fuss about it. Before the wedding, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law had been cordial and even friendly towards me, making the sudden shift in their behavior quite unexpected. In the beginning, I did everything they asked of me, as I wanted to maintain a harmonious atmosphere. However, it became apparent that their expectations were escalating, and they started treating me more like a personal servant than a new member of the family. Despite their seemingly easygoing nature before the wedding, their behavior took a complete 180. After five days of continuous demands, I reached a breaking point. I realized that if I continued to bend over backward for them, things would only get worse. I couldn't keep dropping everything to cater to their needs, especially when they were fully capable of managing certain tasks themselves. Despite graciously allowing them to stay in our home, I decided to set boundaries. I bluntly told them to help themselves because I couldn't prioritize their every whim, the constant requests to heat up their food, and the intentional mess left around the house became too much to bear. Being in the midst of my work-from-home routine, I made it clear that I had my own responsibilities and couldn't fulfill their every request. Surprisingly, my straightforwardness seemed to encourage them to assign even more tasks and chores my way. As I eagerly anticipated my upcoming honeymoon and eventual return to work, I stood firm in my decision to refrain from becoming their full-time housekeeper. During mealtimes, they constantly criticized my cooking skills, insisting that I needed improvement, even though my husband and others had never expressed any dissatisfaction. Unfortunately, my husband, who wasn't working from home, remained oblivious to his family's mistreatment, especially from his mother and sister. While his father-in-law was less condescending, he maintained a distant silence unless he needed something done. Feeling hesitant to burden my tired husband with my grievances, I attempted to discuss the issue with him a couple of days ago. However, he seemed exhausted from work, and I didn't want to sour his close relationship with his family. I decided to wait for concrete evidence before raising any concerns just weeks after our wedding. After asserting my boundaries and refusing to cater to their every need, they grew colder, barely acknowledging my presence unless my husband was around. I didn't mind their chilly demeanor, as I was more concerned about reclaiming my space and enjoying my initial days as a newlywed. An opportunity to expose their mistreatment arose three days ago. While I was working, my mother-in-law barged into the room, holding my old phone and demanding an explanation. Although I couldn't see the text, I recognized the phone as the one stolen a few months before my wedding. It had gone missing during a birthday party I hosted, attended by friends and family, including my future in-laws. Despite the phone's disappearance, my husband and I refrained from accusing any guests, trusting our longtime friends and family. However, when my mother-in-law presented the stolen phone and urged me to read the messages, I finally discovered who had taken it that night. As I read through the text my mother-in-law had been scrolling, shock coursed through me. Months' worth of messages sent from my phone to my ex-boyfriend unfolded before my eyes. Clearly, I wasn't the sender, as I didn't even possess this phone at the time. The texts began a day after my birthday, and they were a series of desperate pleas to win my ex back, along with derogatory comments about my husband, labeling him a loser and a creep, suggesting I needed rescuing. Fortunately, my ex-boyfriend and I had mutually blocked each other after our breakup. And while the mysterious sender had unblocked him, he hadn't reciprocated, ensuring the messages never reached him. 
my sister-in-law entered the room, wearing a smug expression, and openly declared to my mother-in-law that she was convinced I had been attempting to reconcile with my ex even after my engagement. She insisted that they needed to inform my husband immediately to annul the marriage. Understanding that this scheme was likely orchestrated by my sister-in-law, and perhaps my mother-in-law as well, I chose to maintain my composure instead of losing my temper. In a strategic move, I discreetly began recording the entire conversation using my laptop, positioning the screen so they couldn't see it. Remaining calm, I inquired about where my sister-in-law had found the phone. She claimed it was under the couch, a blood and lies since my husband and I had thoroughly searched for it on the day it went missing and found nothing there. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law continued to express her disappointment in her son's choice, labeling me a cheater, lazy, and in disrepair. Turning my attention to my sister-in-law, I questioned how she knew the texts were from my ex-boyfriend. She proudly admitted to conducting pre-engagement research, revealing that she knew I had dated someone with the same name in college. She had overheard a conversation at my party, where I mentioned my past relationship and expressed how my husband had convinced me to give love another chance, breaking my vow to swear off relationships. I reminded her that the found phone didn't belong to her, and she had no right to invade my privacy. The situation escalated as my mother-in-law and sister-in-law encroached further into my personal space. As they continued their criticism, threatening to ensure the demise of my marriage, my mother-in-law expressed her satisfaction in finding the damning texts. She believed these messages could convince her son to distance himself from someone like me, who, in her eyes, wasn't fit to be a wife. According to her, I couldn't cook, lacked respect for the family, and refused to attend to my in-laws. In response, I lost my composure and asserted that I did, in fact, respect family, but they didn't qualify as one. The room descended into name-calling and shouting. Eventually, I managed to push them out locking myself in. Fortunately, my laptop had been recording the entire ordeal, a crucial piece of evidence for later. When my husband returned home, I heard my mother-in-law and sister-in-law complain to him about their findings. Despite my skepticism and nervousness, when he knocked on my door in a calm and quiet voice, I sensed he didn't believe their accusations. I played the recorded conversation for him knowing that even his family was silently waiting outside, anxious about the outcome. He listened patiently and afterward, calmly asked whether I wanted to wait until the next morning to ask his family to leave or if I preferred them to leave that very night. His composed demeanor brought a smile to my face, realizing that despite being his own family, he had no reservations about removing them from our lives if they troubled me. I felt a bit silly for worrying about whether he would believe me over his family, knowing that truth was on my side. I chose to have them leave immediately and proceeded to share with him the complete story of how his family had been treating me since our marriage. His reaction went beyond shock. He was livid that his parents and sister had treated me as their personal maid and had the audacity to label me lazy, unfit, and disrespectful. Upon refusing to cater to their constant demands, my husband abruptly left the room, instructing me to wait inside while he confronted his family. Outside, a tumultuous storm of screams and arguments ensued. I could hear his mother and sister hurling all sorts of insults my way, while his father insisted that I needed to be cut out immediately for supposedly tearing their family apart. After what felt like an hour, the cacophony finally subsided and I might have unintentionally drifted off to sleep. It was around midnight when I woke up to find my husband by my side. He informed me that they had all left and promised to explain everything the next morning, considering the fatigue we both felt. The following day, he revealed that even when his sister showed him the alleged texts I had sent to my ex, he knew it couldn't have been me. Not only did we know the phone had been missing for ages, but the texts didn't resemble my communication style. He also pointed out that my ex had cheated on me, a fact only known to my close friends and me, something his sister couldn't have known. This misstep on her part became apparent when she texted him, and everyone who knew me well understood that I would never reconcile with my ex, no matter the circumstances.
My husband trusted me implicitly but wanted to understand the events of that day. Instead of confronting his family immediately, he decided to come talk to me first after seeing those texts. He too was taken aback by the sudden change in his family's behavior, just as I had been in initially. They had been pleasant and civil in the beginning, only to transform inexplicably. After learning about how his family had treated me over the past few weeks, he couldn't contain his frustration and knew he had to distance himself from them. He had witnessed his father pressuring his mother to give up her career to become a full-time stay-at-home mom and feared they were attempting to force a similar lifestyle on me. While he didn't oppose the idea of me becoming a stay-at-home wife, he wanted it to be my choice, not influenced by his family. Expressing gratitude for my defiance, he apologized for any perceived lack of support and acknowledged that I should feel comfortable bringing such issues to him. We discussed our next steps, and he expressed a desire to go no contact with his family until they genuinely apologized to both of us. I was supportive of my husband's decision to go no contact with his family. It was his family, his choice on how to deal with them. I had already decided not to engage with them or attend any events they hosted unless they'd apologized. Maybe not even then. This morning, while discussing recent events with my mother and updating her on the past few weeks, I expected her to be pleased about my husband's decision. To my surprise, she argued that I was in the wrong. According to my mother, who had been occupied with a work emergency after my wedding, I should have been more manageable and accommodating. She asserted that, as a newly married woman, my work should come second, and my relationship with my family and in-laws should take precedence. She believed I needed to apologize to my in-laws for overreacting. This perspective shocked me, especially coming from my own mother, who had been a working woman in the past. I didn't find her stance fair or necessarily true. My sister-in-law had stolen my phone months ago, not recently, intending to use it against me at some point. My mother insisted that if I had been more respectful of my in-laws, my sister-in-law wouldn't have resorted to such actions. This skewed expectation of unquestioning compliance felt unjust to me, leading to a heated argument with my mother. Feeling upset and unable to burden my husband or discuss the matter with friends due to its personal nature, I turned here to seek opinions on whether I am in the wrong for encouraging my husband to go no contact with his family due to their mistreatment of me. Update. To clarify, my ex and I broke up almost three years before I met my husband. We started dating when I was 24, and my ex and I parted ways a day after our graduation ceremony when I discovered he had been cheating. There was no overlap between my ex and my husband, and by the time I met my husband, I had been single for almost three years. The teasing about my ex at the party was merely in jest and not an indication of lingering feelings. I have no emotions for my ex or any other man besides my husband. My sister-in-law figured out who my ex was by his full name saved in my old phone, enabling her to send those troubling texts. Regarding my mother, I did discuss the situation with my dad, as many of you suggested. He acknowledged that my mom's stance was unfair, but speculated that it might be rooted in her old-fashioned beliefs. While she chose to be a stay-at-home mom, it was her choice, not forced upon her by my dad. He promised to talk to her and try to change her mind, as this revelation came as a shock to both of us. Update 2. I appreciate everyone who took the time to respond to my post. Your insights made me realize that I need to communicate my feelings to my loved ones, especially my husband. I've always been fiercely independent, making it a challenge for me to open up without feeling like a burden. Following the advice from the comments and messages, I plan to speak to my husband about everything that's been bothering me. I'm even considering therapy to navigate the challenges, especially since my in-laws have been unbearable since my husband cut ties with them. Blocking them on social media hasn't stopped my sister-in-law from spreading negativity about me online, and it's causing a rift with my husband's relatives. I intend to address this with him before our upcoming honeymoon. Update 3. I spoke to my husband, and he informed me that he had blocked his family. He wasn't aware of his sister's online activities and hadn't read the messages from concerned relatives. 
He'd assured me that his family's opinions were irrelevant to him, and he had no intention of choosing them over me. He had grown tired of their attempts to intimidate me, and he valued our relationship above all. Knowing this, I no longer cared about his family's perceptions, and my husband's support meant everything. I also shared my mother's perspective, and he suggested that she might come around eventually, even if she doesn't. I'm grateful for the unwavering support of my dad and husband. As we prepare for our honeymoon in five days, I feel ready to face whatever challenges come our way, returning to work refreshed, rejuvenated, and happily married. Thanks to everyone for the sweet messages and advice. Stay tuned for more relationship stories.